as always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the weekend? I had to go with UConn. UConn gets the win. Uh, they beat a, a tough Liberty team that just went in and beat Arkansas. UConn gets the win. UConn is now bowl eligible. It's been a long time since UConn has been to a bowl game. I don't know the last one is. Heck, it may have been the Fiesta Bowl when they played Oklahoma, but I'm not sure. Um, here's what I think is interesting. All of the um, basketball schools that are – bowl eligible before Oklahoma is UConn Duke Syracuse North Carolina UCLA um Kentucky anyone else I'm missing uh, you're missing a, yeah I was gonna say you're Kansas. missing a big one <laughs> Kansas I have it written down here but I couldn't uh it, the writing wasn't very good um that's crazy right Bunch of basketball schools going bowling. UConn won one game last year. And the Jim Mora hiring was widely mocked. And turns out it was a hell of a hire. Yeah. Yeah. He's done a good job. They are... um... I don't know. I can't believe UConn's bowl eligible before OU. Like, that makes me... They're bowl eligible, and this is a place that the university president was saying out loud that they're going to cancel the football program, (laughs) right? Like, we're done with it. We're canceling the football program, and somehow it's still around, and they're going to a bowl game, which... I was happy to see those guys going crazy out there and 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 get that win and and be able to experience that for the first time. That's really cool. Don't know yep. a whole lot about what UConn's done, but I'm guessing some transfer portal uh, heavy uh, recruiting going on there to to make that quick of a turnaround. First bowl game since 2015, so it hasn't been, hasn't been that, that long, long but they won one game last year. Yeah. And, and we're thinking probably, about getting rid of the football program. Well, they won one last year. They it's been like that for several years. Like it was, it was bad. Yeah, just think like what we're going through this year. Like that's how Orlovsky has felt for the last like seven, ever. Yeah, that's crazy. <sighs> Congrats, UConn. I'm very happy for you. Damn it! All right, who do you have as your loser of the weekend? Well. Everyone may notice that I left a basketball school out that is bowl eligible. Didn't mention it because they've actually turned the program around playing good football. But Kentucky loses to Vanderbilt, breaking Vanderbilt's 26-game conference losing streak. Wow. That is, that's what you call a bad loss. Now, some of it, that streak was going to end eventually, right? Like it, it had to end eventually. They can't beat themselves. You know, they're, they're, there's no freebie when you're the, the low man on the totem pole. Did you see how that game ended? No. Like, it was like 30 ish seconds left, left, the touchdown to win it. I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty exciting, but. Is Will Levis really going to get picked that high in the NFL draft? That guy stinks. No, I don't know. I was looking at a maybe stinks is strong. Like I know I get he's got the physical characteristics, but man, he he has some games where he just plays some bad ball. I saw this list. I can't remember who it was. It was maybe it was like CBS or something. But they had the top 100 prospects going into next year's draft, and you had like Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud were up there. Then I think you had maybe a D lineman or two. Will Levis was like the number four or five NFL prospect on that list. And by the way, um, Anton Harrison was number 25 on that list. Yeah. So he, we, we've talked about it. you enjoy the last couple of games of Anton's OU career. Yep. I, now I don't know. I haven't, he hadn't told me anything. I haven't asked, but stands to reason. 
yeah so we uh I just still can't believe UConn's bowl eligible before OU. <laughs> that like hurts my soul, man. Like once you said it, I was just like, oh. That one hurt that like that cut deep. Need a second and to read. Started off three and oh too. Oh, thanks, Ted. That makes ago. me feel even better. Awesome. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Oh, uh, remember when they beat Nebraska and we were like Rip Vittables is amazing. This Here team is go, awesome. Baby. Yep. Could we make the college football playoff? <sighs> Those were the days. Frustrating. Frustrating. And here's the thing, though, like, not to go back into this, but, and I know nobody really cares. And you just, this team, if they don't shoot themselves in the foot, and pretty much like the the TCU and Texas game, like those are, like we weren't going to win those games with the way that those, the the circumstances unfolded. But Kansas State, Baylor, West Virginia, like those games are all totally winnable if you don't just shoot yourself. Like it's all Oklahoma. Credit to those teams, but those games are all on us. Well, awesome. Let's get to my winner and loser of the weekend. But first. First Fidelity Bank is a full service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all, whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone. Everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also give back to the community. FFB donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit ffb.com for more information. And if you're a whiskey or bourbon drinker, stop what you're doing. Head to your favorite liquor store and buy some Balcones products. You got to grab some of Balcones Lineage Single Malt Whiskey. It was voted one of the top 20 whiskeys in the world by Whiskey Advocate, and you'll be shocked by how affordable it is. Also, you got to snag some of Balcones Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. It's made from blue corn. That's the fancy corn. That that was that was so much more fun when OU was winning games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last but certainly not least, you got to buy some of Balcones Pot Still Bourbon. It's big flavors make it the perfect bourbon to drink year-round. Remember in 2012, Balcones Single Malt won the best-in-glass competition, beating brands like Johnny Walker and McAllen. This stuff is the real deal, people. If you love great whiskey and bourbon at a great price, then Balcones products are the only way to go. The whiskey may be made in Texas, but the owners are from Oklahoma. To find a liquor store that has it, visit Balcone, balconesdistilling.com. All right, for my winner of the weekend, thought about going with the ending of the Vikings bills game. That was, I mean, you talk about wildly entertaining. Uh, I mean, bills get the stop on fourth and goal from like the half yard line. They try to sneak it with Kirk cousins stuff him. And the only reason they were down there was because Justin Jefferson had the, I don't think this is hyperbolic. I think that's the best catch I've ever seen. Like to go up and one hand it it on Fourth and well, you look it up on Twitter right now if you haven't seen it. Do it, okay? Because Did you see it, the Notre Dame catch, by the way, it it's better. Okay. I mean, it was fourth and eighteen. Game was on the line. Like, gotta have it, and it's in the defensive back's hands, and he's got one hand on it, and he rips it away, one handed. Like it was insane, dude. And that extends the drive, and now they end up getting stuffed, but. Okay, you watch it. What do you think? I'm watching now. I'm, I'm seeing it in slow mo. Oh yeah, pretty good. He just like cups it and pulls it down through his hands. Who's that DB? Just go grab the football, man. It's right uh, there. I saw some people saying it's fourth down. Knock it down. Hey man, yeah. <laughs> Justin Jefferson. <laughs> that was that's, that that's was impressive. Sick. That was but sick. they end up getting stuffed. It so the Bills get the ball at the half yard line, right? They're running QB sneak. Josh Allen fumbles the snap. It ends up in the end zone. 
Vikings fall on it. Touchdown. Brutal. And it was it was one of those where you're just like, what just happened? <laughs> and then, of course, Josh Allen, like three or four plays, they go right down the field, kick it, kick a field goal to send it in overtime, and then Vikings win it with the field goal in overtime. Wow. So Vikings defense ends up getting the stop they need. But that was just a – it was an insane, like, Scott Hansen was losing it on red zone, man. It was awesome. Oh, I, I can imagine. I bet yeah, that would have been uh, – I wish I would have, would have seen that unfold in real time. I was watching some bad endings to some other games for fantasy stuff. But awesome. uh, that was – that's cool. And credit Josh Allen, who they didn't even think he – weren't even sure if he was going to play or not. Just goes out there, no big deal, and uh, ripping it all over the yard. Yeah, but my winner of the weekend, and it's because they brought me some sports joy on Sunday that was desperately needed, the Oklahoma City Thunder. uh, Dad, I needed to watch one of my squads win, and luckily the Thunder went to Madison Square Garden and put up 145 on the New York Knicks, and it brought brought joy back into my life. I I needed it. I needed it bad, man. Yeah, well – It'll do you some good to see a team go out there and just pour in the offense. That's that's something that was uh, definitely good for the soul, I imagine. Yeah, defense was optional in the entire the, the entire game. It was just 145-135. There was not a lot of defense being played, but Thunder shot the lights out of the ball. 17-31 to 31 from three. Uh, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, I'll tell you right now, if he doesn't make the All-Star game, we riot. I, I just another like 35 or 38, five and eight. Wow. I mean, he balled out efficient it, too. Yeah. Yeah. 22 shots. It's not like he's shooting a ton of shots. He's being super selective with the threes. He shoots like he's just, he's playing awesome basketball. Um, and it was really good seeing Josh Giddy play as well as he did. Uh, one thing that stood out to me, his three pointers had been spinning like sideways like they'd had size spin, and today it looked nice. End over end, like you want to see a basketball spin, like you want to yeah. see the rotation, which he hit, I think, two or three, but apparently he just loves playing at Madison Square Garden because 24, 10, and 12 for Giddy. And how about this stat? He is one of two players ever to record triple doubles during their first two games at Madison Square Garden. Josh Giddy, Wilt Chamberlain. How about that wow. list? When it's just you and Wilt Chamberlain on a list, it it's probably pretty damn good. That's crazy. Yeah, that's uh that's impressive. Wow. How about that? Two triple doubles in his first two appearances there. That's awesome. Yeah, but I just I want to thank the Thunder. <laughs> needed, <laughs> needed that, it. man. I needed, needed it bad. It. I needed it bad on a Sunday where I was I was contemplating starting to drink at noon. I didn't do it though, Ted. I didn't <laughs> thought about it though. It was sad. All right, my loser of the weekend. I thought about going with Chicago Bears fans, man. Oh, it felt like the Bears were in complete control against the Lions. Justin Fields was looking good, making he's, plays with his legs. It was efficient less, what, in passing game. Four or five game. games, he's gotten way better. Yeah, I mean, they're they're probably still really excited about Fields. There's you you absolutely have to be, but he throws the pick six. That kind of swings the momentum in the game. And then Ch- Chicago's defense just late. They could not get the stops that they needed. And they end up losing uh, 31 and 31 to 30 at home to the old Detroit Lions. It was it was exciting watching the Lions win the it, win a game like that, though, man. I was I was pumped for Dan Campbell. Oh yeah. It's he is uh when you see him when the camera pans to him when they're winning, it's it's awesome. That's uh that's great. Yeah, Justin Fields, man, he's starting to come along and it takes a little bit of time. Look at Tua. I mean, everyone wanted to kick Tua out of the league, and that dude is smashing right now. What, they're 7-3, 6-3, 7-3, seven six, six Dolphins? <laughs> I still – the the Justin Fields and the Dolphins thing, he didn't take the coaching. I told him to stop <laughs> scrambling. The, the Mike McDaniel clip, that's still one of my favorite moments of the NFL this year. But you're right, man. Tua Tungvaluwa is – He's good. Yeah. but And I think it says a lot about Mike McDaniel, not only the, the offense he's running, but just the confidence he's he's gotten. Like, Tua's got his confidence back. He's playing. And I yeah. know he had the whole concussion thing, and that was super yeah. scary, but 
Like he's, he's in complete control of that offense. He's just running the show. It's they're, they're fun as hell to watch offensively. Well, that's, that's what I was about to say is they're fun to watch, but it looks like they, and you know, they're winning, which obviously helps, but those guys are all having a lot of fun. Like they're all laughs and giggles on the sideline, you know, receivers, running backs to a, McDaniel's always laughing and smiling. It's it looks like I mean it's they got something good going right now for sure. Yeah, uh, he was twenty five of thirty two for three touchdowns and zero interceptions. Yeah, pretty good. That'll that'll work. But my loser of the weekend, the Pac twelve conference. Oof. We talked about how good a shape they were in. They had three teams: USC, UCLA, Oregon, all in really good spots to go and play in the college football playoff, depending on how things shook out. Apparently Arizona and Washington did not get the memo (laughs) because Arizona went to the Rose bowl and beat UCLA and Washington went to Austin and beat Oregon. And looking at that Oregon game, man, ducks had a seven point lead with just under four minutes to go. Michael Pinnock said, you know what? Let's keep ripping it down the field. He was throwing it all over the yard in this game. Rips a 62-yard touchdown ball, pass. Man. Great. Dude, ball. he looks great. I know. It's wild. He, I was watching the highlights, and I was like, who is this dude? It's just, it looks incredible. But Ty Thompson had to come in, which was, that, that was just a bad deal for Bo Nix. It looked like it was something wrong with his leg or something like that. And... He was banged up, but I guess he w- could have come back in for that fourth and one play. What was that whole thing? I don't know. I, I don't know. I just saw, like, the highlights, and they weren't showing much of that. They just showed him, like, run up to the coach, and, like, it didn't give you much context of, like, how quickly they could have gotten him in or was the play already out there? They're about to break the huddle. I don't know, but that was weird because yeah, I- it didn't go well when he wasn't in there. Yeah, running back just falls down. I don't even if he doesn't slip, right? And I think that was yeah. the Whittington kid. Even if he doesn't slip, it's that's a TFL. Yep. <laughs> but it was that I I didn't necessarily have that big of an issue with the call for landing to go there in fourth and one. Did not love the play call, but I mean sometimes it happens like that, and Washington ends up kicking a game winning field goal. Well. Oregon still had the chance. And what'd you think? The illegal touching? I I, I thought it was a bad call, but so again, did I. I just, I just saw the highlights. Like I, it's not like he ran three yards out of bounds. Like he barely got it. Now he did get contacted. And but he, he got and he reestablished. I couldn't believe Dan Lanning wasn't losing it on the sideline. I know. I, I don't I would have liked to have heard the explanation in real time, or I don't even know. Did they review it? I don't even know what how exactly that went down, but yeah, that was a bad call. At least yeah. that's my interpretation from what I've seen of it. Yeah, but Oregon's defense just gave up entirely, entirely too many big plays uh, to Washington, especially in the past game. But yeah, that's a rough loss. And then Arizona's quarterback, full disclosure, haven't lost a lot of Arizona, but their little QB, Jaden Delora. Dude was, I mean, he was slinging it. He was running around everywhere. I, it was, it was fun to watch. I watched the other game. I was like, oh my gosh, look at they've this kinda, guy. Yeah, they've kind of come out of nowhere. They almost beat USC. Yeah. And, you know, they've been putting up some numbers and caught UCLA slipping a little bit. UCLA throwing into the end zone there at the end of it. Our dude Bobo almost came up with that, that pass from Dorian Thompson Robinson, but. Crazy. Not a good weekend for the Pac-12. Yeah, so now you've got USC at 9-1 and one because, you know, they got off to a bit of a slow start on Friday night but ended up taking care of business against Colorado. But they lost Travis Dive for the year. Yeah, that was big. Lost their, big, their best running back. Lost him, and so you've got that. You've got USC, who, and let's give Lincoln Riley some credit, man. A hell of a job in year one, yep. By that staff, hell of a job to be nine and one and sitting where they're sitting. That's it's really really impressive, really really impressive. But they're the they're the only hope for the Pac-12 now. 
The only hope because the all the other teams, right? Oregon, Utah, UCLA, Washington, they're all eight and two. And a two loss Pac twelve champ is not going to the college football playoff. It's just not gonna happen. No. no. And and all USC has left is UCLA, Notre Dame, and then a Pac twelve championship game. What could go wrong? What could go wrong for the Pac twelve in this scenario? What do the standings look like now? Is it still is it gonna be between it, it's still probably going to be Oregon, right? Because Oregon only has the one conference loss. Right now, the Pac-12 standings, Oregon is – they they will play Utah on Saturday for possess, like sole possession of second place, I believe. Right. And USC plays UCLA, right? Yeah. So, yep. and then if all those teams, like let's say Utah beats Oregon and – UCLA beats USC, then they'll all be tied at seven and two. <laughs> Which but a tiebreaker. I don't that, know. Yeah, then it's uh, probably like your record against the group and but they're remember they're they got rid of well, division, it, so it's it, the top it, two. I think it probably will go to overall record, so that Notre Dame game is gonna impact it as well with USC late. Oh, absolutely. So Pac twelve was in a great spot, man. If everyone took care of business, but Arizona and Washington said, we do not care about us having a team at the college football playoff. We're here to win games on the road. That's impressive, man. And yep. now, now the old Trojans, the only hope for the Pac-12. We'll see. Uh, they got a chance at it. I don't think I mean, they've got a tough road left, but I don't think any team that they play is necessarily unbeatable. Now Caleb Williams has, you know, he he's he's started to struggle here in the last couple of weeks. His numbers, like he's still he's still doing good things. Don't get me wrong, but it looks like just like completion percentage and stuff for him has become far more difficult than it was previously. And you know that's typically how things work. It gets it gets more difficult as the season rolls on. But um, I don't know. They they got a shot at it for sure.